oh, there's our connection gone and coming back again. Okay, I'm just keeping an eye on this. Um, okay, so whenever we were stopped with the CBD, we were then put in a very uh, difficult position because I had a lot of clients who were depending on that and were having great results with it and everything else. And with the whole changing of the laws and all the fun stuff coming in and the more regulations or recognition of what the truth actually was behind the whole CBD thing. Um, as I say, put us in a position where we were stuck. Um, I had two choices. I had a lot of clients depending on this. I had about 20 retailers across Canada and um, they were all, well, what do we do now? They were sending me links to different companies and different alternatives and stuff like this. And it was like, no, there's, there's no other product I'm gonna carry except for pet relief. And we can't get that in with full disclosure and being completely above board and an open book. So we can't get anything in. And um, we discussed all that in the last one, so we don't need to go into that again. But as I say, I had two choices. Um, basically it was either sit in a corner, sucking my thumb, rocking back and forward, feeling incredibly, incredibly guilty and very embarrassed about the amount of people that I had let down with not being able to get this product anymore after the research we had done on it. And uh, the other choice was do something. So I did. And it wasn't easy. Um, and we're still doing a lot of work on it. Um, but we started to research that, okay, there can't only be one substance on the planet that can do all these wonderful things. Well, there kind of is, but there are a lot of other substances out there that Mother Nature has created and has had around for generations. And it's just knowing the different attributes to these things. So we started researching what the endocannabinoid system was, which is the ECS, and a lot of people will talk a lot about that whenever it's to do with the, um, the CBD and stuff. But the endocannabinoid system has basically been only really recently recognized and um, starting to be studied and understood. And in fact, I mean, I'm, I've really only scratched the surface of it myself. But the basic is, is that this is a system all mammals have. And it works on um, signaling um, synapses, responses, all the, the bits that go on behind the scenes and basically how they work together. And the body has a great, great um, ability to help heal itself. And there are certain things that can help those little triggers go off or this pin fires with that pin and that cog fits in that and that wheel goes round better. That's a simple way of looking at it. So went into a lot of research as to finding out what else can do things like that. What is it that ha that's in the cannabis or what is the cannabinoids or what is a sesquiterpene or a terpene or what are all these things? So we basically just went researching mad and the, the nerd hat came on and wish I'd paid attention more in science class. But there you go, I've become this complete weirdo now with all of this researching and stuff going on and came up with a couple of different substances and actually most of them we already had been using. Um, it was actually another client who had been using CBD who had actually twigged our, piqued our interest and a certain substance from them that they had told us about and in fact it kept being, uh, kept appearing in our field of vision as it were and I was like okay, something's saying something, let's go and have a look at this and see what it is. So it was the Copaiba. Now a lot of people from uh, one of the essential oil companies are already very aware of this and they're doing their own straight oil. Um, what I found going into it, that it isn't a, a, a cannabinoid in definite, its actual definition, even though it's being touted as that, but it's a sesquiterpene. And the Copaiba that we use in our smart oil is actually got about 130 different sesquiterpenes in it. Um, there's bisabolol, there's humulene, there's beta carophyllene, which is the main one, or BCP. And that's the main one that has such a really good interaction with the ECS or endocannabinoid system. So we thought, okay, well, if that's there, how do we do something that can maybe boost it? Or how does it work? What kind of concentrations? 
So a lot of research, a lot of digging, a lot of um, doors knocked on, people bugged, um, research papers brought up, investigations done, um, not only on the research paper or the product or the oil, but going further than that and researching the people who supposedly did the research. So yeah, we're that kind of people. Well, I'm that kind of person. <laughs> but I won't apologize for it because the four legged that we want to help and look after as much as possible, and that's really the only reason I'm here, um, they're depending on us to look after them and do the best we can. And I feel it's my due, my duty, um, my calling, whatever you want to call it, um, to do something. So once we found out and figured out concentrations, percentages, um, all of the the ingredients, where are they coming from, what's their proof of cleanliness, we have all of that. We know that there's no radiation done to any of the products, there's, they're not heat treated, they're not filtered, they're not extracted badly or in a, a dodgy way like with, with alcohol or something like that. These are, are pure oils and they are um, basically used in a very, very precise way to get the blend that we ended up with, with the Smart Oil. Now, with the Dragon's Blood we use in it as well, that's actually sustainable, it's coming from Brazil. I know there's been forest fires and everything down there. There still are farms that are working well and in fact the, the trees that the Dragon's Blood comes from actually grow really quite quickly. And it's a tree sap, so it's no different than you know, the guys across the road here that tap their maple trees every year. Um, it doesn't hurt the tree um, and you get oils all the time. So anyway, the Smart Oil, it basically it comes in this little bottle and what I found out was with our mixture and the quality of the ingredients that actually are going into that, that we were getting very, very good um, results from our testing as to the, the, the amount that you need to use is so, so tiny. And it's like, it doesn't sound right. But we are now um, have stories coming back to us from over a year and myself included, personally, I have taken this because I don't believe in testing in animals. So yes, I will actually take it myself and that's exactly what I did um, for a period of months before I would even use it on one of my animals. Um, I've helped Murphy, which is my big percher on Morgan Cross, a uh, draft mix horse of 24 years old, and it's definitely helped with inflammation with them. But basically what it's going to do is similar to uh, what we find the CBD to do. Um, again, you know, we're not claiming anything about this. It has helped certain things, and it may help certain other things, and in fact the tip of the iceberg has literally just been scratched with this and we're still finding out more and more things that it's, it's doing or people are finding that it's doing. Um, but the biggest thing was, was the fact that the ingredients work with the endocannabinoid system, so it's actually helping the body to help itself. So that's the, the main thing, but the sort of sidelines to that as well is with the dragon's blood, it's actually got the highest ORAC value of any substance on the planet. Now the ORAC value um, is to do with free radicals. I can put it in the comments after this if anybody actually wants to know what it does or you can actually just google ORAC o -R -A -C, and find out what the highest um, substance is or the highest content or level and you'll find this dragon's blood uh, or Croton Lishleri, Sangre de Drago or Sangre de Grado. There's a few different ways that it's being uh, either pronounced or misspelled or spelt or whatever. Again, another tree set. We found out whenever we put this with the copay but it supercharged it. So it's not just the one substance, it's both of them and synergistically they work together incredibly well. Um, I find myself that it helps me with pain management because I have Lyme disease which is so much fun. Um, anyway, the, you can use it for dogs, cats and horses. Um, the way that it comes is in three different concentrations as such, so basically they're all in the Sorry, I have the top of this so I can show you that what it actually looks like, but there's the, the large one. Large one. Which is backwards, obviously, because the phone's round. 
but it's for animals that are over 76 pounds. There's the, the medium strength, which would be the blue writing or the blue bottom on it. And that's basically for animals between 26 and 75 pounds. And for your wee tiny animals and your, your cats and I don't know whether a hamster, well, it's a mammal that'll work. It's got an endocannabinoid system. So the, uh, the small one is for any animals up to 25 pounds. So they're all the same um, 15 ml bottle. And the only actual complaint that we've had about this is that whenever you open these little tops, they come with these um, little droppers inside, which are like the little essential oil dropper. And they're awful for decanting drops out of. So pull that out. And what we'll do, and I don't want to waste that oil. There we go. Tastes a little nutty. Probably a bit like me. I'm a little nutty, but we, we, we give you a little um, dropper with it. So we keep it separate because it will not fit in the bottle. Eventually, hopefully by the end of this year, we will actually have these coming out in there on dropper bottles. But all you do is then take a little bit up. It's a lovely sort of greenish, amberish, semi-clear liquid and uh, you can just use the drops out of that. Um, you can put it onto a treat, you can use it topically. Um, we have found incredible um, uses with it with horses um, and where one of the best places for it to be absorbed is through the heel bulbs. If they have pain in their, their, their the legs or their feet or swelling or inflammation, um, sorry I actually do like the taste of it, um, but onto the heel bulbs is one of the very easily absorbed roots for it to get into a horse's system. If you actually saw a horse's hoof with everything stripped by, back and the amount of little um, capillaries and everything else that actually end up in a horse's foot is quite remarkable. And hence the, the expression, no, no foot, no horse. It's very true. Um, so you can actually topically put it on there. Uh, a few other places to use it, you can use it directly on the skin. Um, just a, a drop or two, the spreadability is really good. And I mean, we're going by drops here as well. I, I keep reiterating that and not actually full droppers. This is the kind of size dropper you'd find in a 30 mil bottle of something else. And you may have to do a dropper or two, depending on the size or, or of the animal. Um, on, depending on what the actual product is. That's very, very costly. Um, because of the potency of this, we find drops. Yes, not droppers. So up to four drops per day, depending on to which category, uh, obviously of the concentration that you need. Um, so topically on horses, you can also put it onto, in behind their, their ears or on the top of their head, or the pole. Um, it's also a very good, um, absorption area because it actually starts at, up to the top of the the bladder meridian and that actually transfers right through right to the bottom of the back feet so um, that will actually help as well uh, you can drop it directly onto a sore or um, like a, a hot spot or something like that and it will facilitate helping to take the inflammation out of that we again cannot say that it cures anything because we don't know that it cures anything um, and that's not allowed to be said anyway so you can't say it cures anything or treats anything it's not a drug only drugs are allowed to say that and drugs are very very highly regulated as you all know um, it is a completely natural medicine so obviously we always have to say as well that please do not use this on pregnant or lactating animals or indeed um, under Health Canada with our colloidal silver, uh, we can't say as well that you can use it in horses intended for food, which we find very sad that horses are being used for food, but that's a whole other topic. Um, for dogs, um, you can use it directly onto their paws as well, because that again can be absorbed in. Um, although if that's what you're looking for, we do have the Smart Oil in a balm, which we'll cover in another week and just you cover about the uses for that and show you how to do that. But yeah, a few droppers uh, or a few drops per day, and just once a day, so you can stick it on the treat. You can put it on the gum line, you can put it on the paw, you can put it on the back of the head, 
you can put it on the base of the tail for a horse as well it's also quite good massage it in there as well is nice um, that's another route of good absorption for like sort of essential oils and like aromatherapies and stuff like that um, it does have a nice smell to it I haven't actually ever burnt it I'm thinking of the aroma um, parts of it but I know that copaiba is used in quite a few different um, aromatherapy oils because it has its nice scent um, some of the stories that have come back are mind-blowing we did not have any clue that we were going to get anything as um, good a response as we have and daily I'm hearing more and more things that are happening um, so much so um, oh something I meant to mention earlier why is this so great compared to a lot of other things because every ingredient that's on it is already on the approved substances list so that's very important whenever you're coming to horses because a lot of horse people who are needing something to help for performance horses, for example, they can't use the likes of a CBD because that's actually showing up in drug testing. This doesn't show up in it because there's nothing that's considered a drug in it and there's nothing that's considered a restricted substance. So that's a huge benefit to the horse world, if nothing else, but it's a huge benefit to everyone. Um, we've heard that it can help with travel sickness um, which I find in my own poodle. She used to projectile vomit and I'm happy to say now that she doesn't. Um, there's also for some people have said that they find help with anxiety. Um, again, I'm always, I'm not as forthright as saying, oh yeah, it's going to help with this and this that, and the other thing. It's like, no, show me the proof first. Try it, see if it works. Um, there's about 20, 30, 40 different products out there on the market for anxiety. But you have to know what's actually causing the anxiety in order to give something the right substance that might help it so yeah that's one of those things is weird but the general thing is inflammation yes pain yes swelling yes um it can help with joint pain it can help with arthritis it can also help with gastrointestinal issues so um like irritable bowel colitis um anything like that now if there's anything the only thing I would maybe steer away from is if it was a like kidney failure or something like that um, but there's something that's very very cool to be able to learn to do and you can google this and it's called surrogate muscle testing so you can actually present this to the animal and have someone muscle test you while holding the animal or touching the animal um, that's a whole other thing as well and that may be covered someday we'll show you how to muscle test on our finessium page um, which is the holistic practice that I also have as well we deal with a lot of things but I hope that gives you a little bit of info Ooh, do you know of dogs using this that have glaucoma um, hi Danielle just saw a, a question popped up there I don't uh, I'll be perfectly honest with you I don't um, something I wouldn't be putting in the eyes um, and if, if that's the thing I mean you can put it in the ears you can put it in the food uh, you can put it in their paws and things like that um, no idea it's certainly something that it's not going to hurt that's the bottom line here is that it's not going to hurt so it's certainly something that you can try um, will it help it may it may just help if there is any pain to do with that as well it may help if that's caused with a lot of swelling around it and danielle if you want to get in touch with me um send me a private message um and if this is one of your own animals i'd like to hear a little bit more and maybe we can try try some um and indeed if anyone has any good stories that they would like to share i am looking for case studies done on this um, a lot of people will say, well, where's your clinical trials? Where's this? Where's that? Where's the other? There have been lots and lots of studies done on each of the ingredients that are in this oil. Um, I know from my own experience that it's not hurting and it's not harming. And the other alternative then for clinical trials is finding some millionaire who's willing to throw millions at us to actually do clinical trials. The other side of that is that then the clinical trials have to be done on animals we don't want to do that we don't want to subject some beagles in a laboratory being 
um, having this dropped on them or whatever. Not for the fact that we think the oil is ever going to hurt them, it's not. We just don't agree to having animals in labs and subjected to um, trials um, just for the sake of somebody saying something. Um, hi Hilary, yeah, somebody's watching from Scotland, hello. Um, so yeah, the oil is good and actually Hilary has a good story. She's one of our testimonials as well, where she had a, a, a German Shepherd, beautiful German Shepherd, who was having a lot of pain and she actually found out that it, it helped the pain with, with her. So that's good. Um, other things that it's helped with, um, it's helped with the lameness in the horses. We did talk about that through the swelling legs or whatever. Um, I have a case study being done as well that hopefully is going to come within the next couple of months that's something we'll definitely publish um, we have a holistic vet actually selling this and is actually very aware because they're a holistic vet they're aware that the ingredients are all approved and um, they're not restricted and she's also very aware of the attributes of each of these ingredients as well We've talked to um, some bioscience labs as well, and some bio are very, very, some very um, clever scientists who were surprised that I even came up with this on my own. So yeah, I'm a bit of a freak. I'm quite happy with that. And uh, they said both basically the sesquiterpene um, side of things and the endocannabinoid system is just literally being tapped into now and they, they wondered how I came up with this combination myself and I said basic kinesiology and they were blown away and I said well I said dogs don't understand placebos neither do cats neither do llamas or goats or horses so if they're showing uh, positive responses or the fact that it's helping then that's the proof that we need and that's all the proof that we want and I think you would say that you would agree with that as well. Um, reason behind com calling being called smart oil, actually it was a, a, a retailer of ours who named it that. I don't think he knows to this day that it was his fault. Um, but I told him what we'd come up with because he had been one of our uh, pet relief retailers. And uh, chatting to him one day and I said, yep, yeah, basically we're finding this, that and the other with it. It's this, it's that, it's the other. We need drops, not dropper. So, it's a lot more affordable um, to people out there as well, especially um, the elderly. And a lot of times we find that a lot of the elderly um, clients have elder dogs who benefit from this greatly just because it can ha make them be more comfortable if they're having pain as they're getting older. Um, we find vets have found that this has worked very, very well as an adjunct to other um, drugs or medications that they've been on it doesn't have any contraindications with it so you're not going to hurt with that um, and we're explaining it to him that you know it's in a, a 15 ml bottle it's tiny it's very concentrated it goes a long way it's very economical um, they're all um, very well researched ingredients and we find them um, from ethically sustainable sources so um and also that it's not taking up a lot of room on any retailer's shelf in fact most retailers uh, we we do supply sample size or sample bottles or empty bottles just for display and they can keep them under their by their cash or in a little lot cabinet or whatever just for security but for the the cost factor on this i mean you're usually finding that if an animal's taking about two drops a day that you're going to get about three months usage out of one of these bottles which is very cost effective for the end user. And I, as a business person, I suck. Um, but at the end of the day, I also have a budget for my pets. And if I can find something that's gonna work, it's effective, it's cost effective, and um, makes a difference, and it's easy to use, that's it. And telling him all of this, he's like, that's really smart. We also reduce our carbon footprint because we could have diluted this and had it into gallon jugs that you had to give like, you know, 30 mils a day or whatever it was. Um, but that's a lot of packaging. That's a lot of wastage. That's a lot of weight for shipping. So we're also doing our little part as much as we can. And of course, all of these are recyclable. So there you go. That's why we called it smart. And um, the reason for the, the explosion, if you really want to know behind that as well, is because uh, I was designing the labels 
just after the uh, the great comic book writer passed away. So it was more of the pows and the wows and the bam and there it is. So um, Finesium, you should all know by now what Finesium is, but Finesium is Dogs of Pride's private label and it's from the three dogs from the original logo. And if I grab one of our cards, so the three dogs were Finn, Jesse, and William. And that is Finesium. And that is Smart Oil. So thanks for watching. Please share. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or private message me. You can also order online at dogsofpride.com. We ship all over and we are looking actively for distributors and retailers worldwide. The nice thing, because this is not restricted on anyone's lists, that Australia can get this and use it. Um, the UK can as well. Both of those countries are also restricted the same way as Canada is in the fact that they are not allowed to be selling CBD. So any holistic vets out there, any vets that you know that may be interested in it, please help spread the word. And we look forward to hearing from you and all your good stories as soon as you have them. Um, also as well, if you are using any of the Finesium products, and you would like to send us a high res image that we can use in future advertising or in our future training videos that we're putting together for these for our retailers. Um, as long as you send us a high resolution, so a very clear, clear image of your pet with our product in the picture, we will send you uh, one of whatever you have in the picture with them, no matter where you are. So that's something that we're really standing behind. We know this stuff is awesome. We need to get the word out there. Um, it really is helping a lot. And I am so, so thrilled that I have been able to create this little thing that can help a lot. We just need to get it out there. And um, through the wonder of social media, hopefully we will do that um, with YouTube. So have a good night and um, thanks for watching and take care. Bye.